May 10th meeting of the Planning Commission, Montpelier Planning Commission. Uh, first, we have to approve the agenda. We have a motion to approve the agenda. I move to approve the agenda. Okay. I'm not sure if that's technically supposed to be a motion. I always second guess myself when oh. I say that. <laughs> but I, whatever it is, uh, do we have a second? A second. Okay. Those in favor of approving the agenda, say aye. 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 Okay. Agenda approved. Brings us to comments from the chair. Uh, I do have a couple of things to note. The first is uh, that it's kind of a two part thing. Hopefully, everyone's aware of the equity survey the city's doing. Um, and if you're not, look it up and participate. That's pretty neat thing they're doing now. Hopefully it turns into action. Um, and Marcella had raised in an email, like whether we want to include the equity survey. So I guess I'd like to briefly mention that. Looking at it, it looks like the governance chapter would be the appropriate place, but I believe city council is in charge of that. What do you think, Mike? I was, Sorry, I'm not Mike, but I was more thinking I, if I had read it correctly in the assessment, there was um, a mention of like an equity plan, like there, oh yeah, the equity action plan. This will help inform the development of the equity action plan. And that's the thing I'm thinking we would want to reference or incorporate, less the survey results itself. I'm on a meeting. And I had not, I heard about it through work. So I I don't know if I'm like not on the right lists or what, but if everyone else heard about it, I'd be curious how. And yeah, I heard about it from my old neighbors. <laughs> yeah. So not through yeah. Yeah. I heard about it through is it through work via Surge, Central Vermont um Surge. I had not heard about it. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I heard about it from a couple of places, but the, the biggest one was I'm on this um, email list with people who are interested in police reform in town and they sent it around. You should have sent it to staff and commissions. <laughs> That's a lot of people. <laughs> true. True, true. Uh, yeah, so, so sorry for the, I got distracted there for a, a second, I just, but um, yeah, I mean, for where, where things can go um, once these get developed, I've been trying to focus on the core chapters that are necessary uh, and required for us to be able to move the plan forward, but we can always add as many chapters as we want. So even the governance chapter has kind of, in arts and culture have kind of been set off to the side. If we get the time to get to them, great. Um, and, and I think we could certainly have chapters about a number, a number of topics that aren't required, but, um, you know, uh, I've worked in communities that did a health, uh, you know, public health as a chapter. Um, but, uh, and we've talked internally here about, you know, how we tie in the, the, the questions of social justice, equity, um, you know, should there be some kind of chapter that addresses those um, addresses those in, as its own chapter within the, the plan. And I think what we'll do is probably as we work our way through, um, a couple of these are, they're doing their own work right now. So it almost doesn't make sense to, um, to wait until they're done anyways. Um, you know, that's one reason we put public safety off is there's actually a public safety commission that's working on public safety issues and coming up with a plan and um, so we're kind of letting that process run itself through, which should be done in July or August. And, um, then I'd be able to kind of pick up where, what they've got to kind of build that part of the plan. Um, and so at this point, I'm focusing on these six or seven chapters of the 10 or 11 that are required. Um, there'll be a handful of them that'll, that'll be left. And then we can add other ones on as we, you know, as we see fit. 
you know, we may go through and prioritize them to go through and say, look, I don't think we have the time to do um, four extra chapters, but we could easily do one or two. And this is, these are the one or two that we think are the most important. Let's prioritize governance and equity or whatever we, whatever we decide to go with. Okay, so to, to, to remind me, who are we thinking was going to spearhead the govern, governance chapter? Was it going to be the Planning Commission or someone else? Uh, I was going to probably work with uh, the city manager and their you know, assistant city manager to kind of go through, um, because a lot of that comes through administration and city council. So having them kind of take the first draft at it would kind of set the table for the planning commission to then review it and integrate it into the plan. Um, okay. you know, we, we still, as the planning commission, have to do the land use chapter. So we still have that on out, out there for uh, on our work to do list. Okay. If you, if you just do us a favor, when you, when you go to do that later on, just pass along that there's an interest from us in including the equity plan in, in that chapter. Uh, yeah, the other thing I was going to bring up actually was segue as well, because Mike brought up art and culture, and that was the thing I was going to talk about. Um, I personally have not forgotten about our discussions about the art and culture chapter, and I had actually done an outline before, which is in on the website. Uh, so I'd be happy to, uh, if, if Mike feels like he needs any more to do a draft of that later on, I'd be happy to help you with that, Mike. Just let me know. Um, but it, it looks like that outline does have the like a draft version of everything we need for it. Just not any written chapter, obviously. Um, okay, that's all I have. So next we have general business and we don't have any members of the public. So we'll pass right through that on to approving the minutes from last time so everybody can take a look at those. And when you're ready, I'll take a motion for approving those minutes. I'll move to approve the minutes. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm late, but um, I have a question. It says a decision will need to update from the CNS working group. A decision will need to be made as to whether the policies stand alone or are part of the city plan. Are they policies? Did we talk about that at the last meeting? That it sounds, the terminology sounds wrong to me. Yeah, we talked about whether or not we could say it will be the policy of Montpelier to do X, Y, Z in the plan, or if we needed to say Montpelier will implement a policy via the, you know, whoever, the administration or the um, city council. Oh, okay. I don't believe we, yeah, I think it's right that we didn't land on something, but. Okay. Yeah, I guess I just, I had forgotten that, to be honest, and just reading it, like, policy sounds, um... Yeah, I think it's, that word's kind of misleading for, what I th for the discussion I remember. It's more of, like, supplemental explanation on the website of what's in the plan. I mean, that's how I think of it, but correct me if I'm, if you think of it differently, Mike. Uh, I think it was more as Marcella was talking about it with um, the discussion was really about whether or not we should be phrasing our, when we talk about a policy, should we say the city shall, will adopt an, will adopt the policy about X or should we just say the policy is X and when we adopt the plan, it becomes the policy of the city. Um, and I know we had a conversation about that. I'm not sure if that's clear in the minutes that that's what we were talking about, but that 
that is what was discussed in at least that was my recollection. Okay, yeah, yeah I just it struck me like if somebody else was reading it, policies might sound more <laughs> um, definitive or I don't know, confusing. Yeah, I mean, there's loads of policies in the plan, so it's not like we're talking about leaving that out. Um, yeah, okay. I, I think maybe, that, maybe that's whether the policies should be adopted separately or adopted as a part of the plan. Ad adopted with the plan, yeah. Yeah, I guess I don't know if anyone actually reads these <laughs> on the website, but I feel like if somebody did, they might be confused as to that, what that means. Um, but I'm not sure I have a good suggestion for. Um, I would suggest phrasing exactly as Mike and Marcella did then about like with the details and the nuance about when when we include a policy, will we state it directly or will we leave it for later to be stated directly or elaborated upon? I'm definitely not concerned about things like that. I think it's gonna work itself out as we go through the chapters. And, and when we have a context in front of us, I feel like we'll know what we wanna do. Okay, so uh, with those changes, uh, we have. Let's try again. Let's get a let's get a new motion since we have some changes. I move approval of the minutes with that change. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Marcella. Those in favor of approving the minutes with the state of changes, say aye. 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 Okay. Minutes approved. Fun stuff. Okay, so next we uh, we have you know the main course here for for the night, which is historic preservation chapter and the implementation strategy, and we want to vote something out. Uh, I'm thinking we start with the implementation strategies or implementation. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, and you go ahead, Mike. Uh, I didn't know if you do you want me to share my screen or do you want to take the screen or yeah you go ahead and share because um I don't have a set opinion on which version we're looking at to start here whether it's going to be the, the spreadsheet version or the other Um, so, yeah, so this one, we can go over, I don't know how much we need to or want to talk about the aspiration for historic, I guess I can leave that one out if anyone's got comments on that. Um, so I will, what I will say to open is that everything that I put in here for aspirations and goals is what was uh kind of finalized by the committees themselves so i haven't made edits and just to point out you know i didn't or don't uh 100 agree with everything that all the committees have put together so um don't don't be afraid to point something out if you think it's not what you guys think we should be doing or they should be doing um but in this case you know, as it applies to the aspiration, they were one of the first commissions to go through and they, they chose a very, you know, straightforward, simple aspiration. Um, they're really just looking at trying to have a community that understands, appreciates and preserves our historic resources. So they're really kind of looking at the three pieces, which you then see 
written again here in the in the goals. So they kind of um, they want to improve the understanding. They want to increase the community's appreciation. They want to continue to improve the city's protection. Um, so I know there's been a lot of conversation about you know the goals and then kind of this you know applying benchmarks or measurables to these. Um, and I think if we're going to, I think my my recommendation or my thought is that we should keep the goals as they are, because I think the goals are reflective and break down. The, the idea of the goals is to break down the aspiration into bite-sized pieces. Um, you know, the strategies to improve our understanding are going to be different strategies than appreciation or preserving. And so we really want to kind of break things into a couple of pieces that we can then implement with different strategies. Um, and then we had in, in within the office, we've had a lot of conversation about what I think John has brought up a lot and, and others have as well, which is how do, how do we get some benchmarks or some measurables in here? And, you know, I've had a hard time kind of um, picking things apart. And, and I've been doing a bunch of reading over the past two weeks from other, you know, a little bit out of ICMA, a little bit out of some other um, different authors who talk about, you know, how challenging it is to come up with metrics for um, government goals, because our goals, you know, a lot of performance measures and things um, work well in the private sector because you've got very economic ties for everything. But sometimes it's very diff difficult to, to have, you know, think of equity. Um, you know, how do you start having you know, measurable goals with equity or um, racism. And some of them are just, they're just in, inherently difficult to put these things in. And so they talk about a lot about internal and external. And, and you know, in some cases you can measure them, some cases you can measure pieces of them. So I kind of looked at it initially, we can look at, and, and they said this is a poor way of doing it but it's an effective way of doing it nonetheless. And that is um, by using your, your benchmarks as uh, an evaluation of your strategies. So um, say for instance, you, you can have a checkbox. One of the strategies is to have do the historic scenic study. So basically where is the, the state house dome visible? Uh, we used to, in our zoning, have regulations that would say if, if the state house dome can be viewed in these areas, you can't build any project that would block the state house dome. Uh, we no longer have that rule in effect because we um, we we just don't have the specificity of, of in one of our plans. So we kind of need that plan replicated so we can readopt those rules. Um, the benchmark is really a yes no. Did we do this or not do this? Um, you know, in other cases, we can have measured outputs. So you can have these kind of yes or no, or you can have these measured outputs, things that we do. Again, these are back to strategies. You're not really measuring the outcomes. You know, um, we're going to do 24 community outreach efforts, which is community appreciation. They have the, you know, the historic outreach program. If you're going to do three outreach episodes a year, for eight years, you might go and have a benchmark that says we're going to do 24 of them. It doesn't really measure the output, which would be the best thing. You, If you could measure outcomes, you'd be better than measuring outputs. So your outputs are what we do. You know, we do the, we do the outreach and we do the training to the public. But that's not really measuring community's appreciation. That's measuring we're doing things to help the community appreciate it but we're not actually measuring the appreciation, which would be the outcome. Um, so measuring outcomes are things like, and I don't have any for historic, but if we were doing housing, we might have an outcome that says we want to have 150 new housing units. Um, we're not going to build any housing units. Um, I, I won't build any housing units. The city won't build any housing units. And yet our, our goal is to have 150 housing. You know, our benchmark would be to, to increase our housing by 150 units. That's an outcome. And that's actually very, very direct 
and is exactly what we would want to have as a benchmark and a measure. At least that's from the books and, and articles I've been reading. That's kind of the gold standard, but it's hard. What they point out is it's hard for government because a lot of what we do is not tied to these types of things. We can measure outputs. You know, as I mentioned, we can say we're doing 24 of these and we're doing eight of those, and we can have a box that checks off how many of them that we do, but it doesn't necessarily directly tie to, you know, how do you measure a community's appreciation? I mean, you can do a survey so, before and you can do a survey after, but it's a tricky one to do. So one thing, one thing I wonder is uh, what do people think of for the, it's like, yes, yeah, some of the goals are not directly measurable. Um, would, do, or would people be in favor of wording them as such, like for goal number two here, can't measure appreciation very easily. So to phrase it as create opportunities to increase the community's appreciation, which is something that's measurable, whether or not we created opportunities or not, or, or does it not matter that much and we should leave it? I don't hate that change to do an inc inc well increased opportunities. Wait, can you say it one more time? <laughs> uh, I said create opportunities to increase the community's appreciation for its historic resources. Uh, right. Okay. So it'd be like that was sort of their education and outreach. Hey, I'm sorry. Can I butt in real quick? I'm sorry I'm late, guys. I apologize. I'm I'm in Nebraska right now doing doing some family stuff. But um, where exactly are we looking right now? We we are just starting uh, looking at the goals and strategies for the historic preservation chapter, and so we're talking about the goals. And Mike was just talking about uh, he was referring to some of our previous discussions about creating benchmarks. The way I think it was just measurables, making things more measurable, and he was just pointing out how some of these things are basically impossible to measure. Is this the goal slash measurable objectives tab in the spreadsheet? Yeah, can you see Mike's share Barely. screen? It's, it's, really, it's really small on my screen. Oh, so it's, uh, I can try to make it bigger here. It's more, it's more on my screen than anything else. I just have a very small screen in front of me. Uh, yeah, we're just looking at the, the spreadsheet template under the goals tab. Okay, cool, thank you. So, yeah, so I mean, what, what do you guys think? It is, it is an idea to kind of to, to kind of do that. It would lend itself to, to, to doing that. Some of the other chapters will be easier. Like I said, when we look at energy, I think energy does have a number of benchmarks that we could do. And my recommendation for there would still be the same. I wouldn't want the benchmarks to be the goal. I would rather have a goal and then have a benchmark that helps us evaluate our success or lack thereof of accomplishing our goal. Um, I would see the bench, the benchmarks, but we can word our goals better to make lend them better to a, a benchmark, as you said. Um, I'm not against your idea to create opportunities. I think if they these are all more, these feel all more like part aspiration and part strategy. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's okay because it's a goal. I think if if we, as long as the strategies, if I recall, they do support a more kind of benchmarking type of goal that says increase the opportunities where a where the community can deepen its appreciation for historic resources. As long as our strategies back that up, I think that would be fine. I think they do. I think they do too. Yeah, I think the goals were intended to kind of be the what. What are we trying to do? Um, we're trying to improve the understanding. We're trying to increase appreciation. And then the strategies in the next tab are, are how, how are we going to improve that understanding? How are we I feel to like, and maybe I'm looking too much into this, but I feel like some of this, the emphasis on the appreciation and understanding comes from... Um, some of the pushback or the misunderstanding that was expressed during the last zoning rewrite and when we we dealt with um, the historic district and 
um, the changes that were proposed there. So, which is why I was, I was thinking these strike me more as strategies. I feel like as a city, I'm not sure that the ultimate goal is having individuals in the city appreciate and maybe understand historic resources. Like we could meet all of these goals and actually like depreciate, like we could lose our historic resources, right? I feel like our goals should be increase, like increasing investment in, have in our historic resources and having Montpelier be like, like we have the, the largest contiguous uh, state historic district in the in the state, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. right? Like this is a, a huge valuable asset that's recon you know recognized um, at, at the state and beyond. So I feel it seems like having people understand and appreciate them is a way to get them to be stewards of them of, in the future and to understand to, to lead to us improving our um, protection of our, our historic resources. Does that, does that make sense or is that resonating with anyone? I, yeah, I think so. I, I have a, a couple of things on what you just said though. One is that goal number one, I don't, I think we actually can word that better because look like if you actually look at the strategies that go with it, what that not what goal number one's actually referring to is the city itself, not the residents understanding what the resources are like, like doing more surveys and, and, and looking at areas that have historic resources that we haven't focused on before. And so it's really like information based. And then number two is the outreach aspect and like making people appreciate. And so if you're pitching to change um, one of them, then I think you're talking more about what two's getting at. It, but one also, I think maybe could be worded to, and, and I tried to think of something and to, honestly, I could not think of the perfect way to get at what exactly one's trying to talk about, which is again, like information. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I, I, I did misread one to think more about the, the residents. I think it's easy yeah. to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Kirby, but, Kirby just got what the, historic preservation's intent was he said it's kind of you know the hpcs you know as the city government our our understanding of the historic resources because we can't develop these other two and three goals um without an understanding of the res resources so maybe something like identifying historic resources maybe that's a better way to put what that's getting at and number two, I'm, I'm open if John has some language to get to, to better get at the heart at what appreciation leads to, which is what I understood what he was saying. Yeah, and I, my thoughts on your comments, John, are just, um, I, I, I don't think you're, the way you were phrasing them is, um, is, is wrong. I think it's just different uh, in how we, um, how we word these really comes down to, you know, how, how we package these together just impacts how we are setting up the strategies because the strategies implement the goals. And I don't, you know, and I think you're just, you're just kind of packaging them a little bit differently rather than, you know, looking at, um, looking at uh, how do we get members of the public to invest in their historic in their you know, invest in in the protection of the historic resources or invest in the maintenance of their historic resources is just a, a slightly different way of looking at it and the policies the, the strategies we would use to increase investment might be different than you know focusing on the protection of the historic resources um so i think it's just Either way, I think would would work. Well, I know it doesn't fit the um, format that you prefer, Mike, because you prefer starting with a uh, with a verb that's that's like a an up or down type verb. Um, 
or continue, which would be, you know, but, uh, you know, I, I think the number one, I, I think it better describes what number one means is to say, to identify and understand Montpelier's historic resources. Or, and if you want, I mean, better. I, I mean, I can, if, if people, if other people agree, I can certainly make that change. So the original framework, and, and I'll just go and uh, just take a step back, was that what we were trying to do is in the state's planning manual, one thing they were recommending for communities to look at is to try to identify whether you're going to maintain, evolve, or transform. And that would help to frame how you approach your strategy. So if you're establishing a goal, if you, if you talk about it in these boxes, then it will help you to understand, okay, if we need to improve something, then we're gonna to need to maybe do more than what we're already doing, or we may need to, you know, uh, how do we kind of look at those? But I think what I've found is the historic resources working document that we have it has already changed significantly. And I think once we've gotten to here, we're talking about how we communicate this, how we communicate this to the public. And I think we can go through and, and leave this structure behind as long as we keep the, the thought. So my thought is I think that's perfectly fine to go through and, and take it out of the improve the understanding. If we, if your way says it much better um, but it says the same thing, that we haven't lost the intent of what they're trying to do, which is to increase the understanding or improve the understanding, and, but it'll say it in a better way. So, What about would... improved documentation? Is that what we're talking about? Um, we're, we're, talking, uh, like we're talking about um, learning more about what historic structures and, and development exists that has not had a historic preservation focus yet. Or at least that's part of it. And um, that would be, presumably that would be documented somehow, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, do you, would it be helpful if, if we skip ahead to the strategies, then come back to the goals after everyone is familiar and, and under the strategies we have, which goal is associated. So if everyone remembers the one is about information, identifying resources. Number two is about outreach and appreciation. Number three is about protection. Um, we could possibly go ahead to the strategies then come back to the goals to see. But, um, uh, if we, it's is it's that, a, is that all right? And you see over here in the right column, you know, these three, G1, 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 these are the ones that went to understanding. Um, so this was based on the format we looked at this last time, so I won't go into it a lot. Um, but um, ultimately at the end, um, I went through and finished it. So we're talking about, uh, I believe, 10, 11. There are 11 things that the city does to advance our historic preservation goals. Um, and so the understanding they, the HPC wants to do more historic surveys. Uh, so we've got a historic survey program, um, separately, we've got this historic scenic resources. This is that, that, that dome, the state house dome survey that they want to do. It's a one-time study, uh, the CLG program. Uh, we talk about the historic preservation outreach program. This is where we had collapsed in all of their outreach efforts, because they had talked about wanting to have walking tours, um, the updating the website, identification of education material here in the office, um, their design review guide for um, applicants, that's kind of all lumped into this outreach program. Um, you know, designated downtown program makes us eligible for grants, historic grants, there's a lot that goes in there. Um, policy on city, uh, city owned buildings, basically we, we establish a policy of maintaining our buildings in accordance with secretary standards, capital complex agreement, um, that's still out there. That would be a separate thing. That's part of G3. That's part of preservation. So these are kind of tying into preservation. 
how do we preserve those things? We can preserve our own buildings. That's how the state does their stuff. Uh, tax stabilization is, a, is another program. Uh, it is written in there that if you maintain a historic building, it makes you eligible for a tax stabilization. Uh, we, it's why we have the design review rules and the unified development regulations, which are the zoning bylaws. Um, and then we study preservation program for owner occupied houses. This is something HPC wants to do. Again, there are things in here I don't think actually will work, but that's, that's one of their goals. And then our grant writing, and this is stuff that we do already. Um, the only thing really is to study to, um, what, what they want is in number 10 is really simply is that there is a lot to help any commercial property. You can get tax grants. All of these grants down here are all eligible for commercial historic buildings. If you happen to personally own a single family home that's historic in the historic district, you have to meet all of our design review requirements, but you get none of the tax stabilization um, none of these grant programs you're eligible for. So what HPC wants to do is to research some opportunities that the, that the city of Montpelier could locally come up with some options for owner occupied houses. So it's, it's not establishing the program. It's going to study options of creating a program. So that's, that's what number 10 is. Um, so this is really the 11 things that between HPC and city staff that we do. Many of these things we already do. Um, a couple of them, we're expanding on them um, and we're kind of you know, making programs where we just have ad hoc things right now. We're kind of saying, let's group them together. But these, this is how we would accomplish those three goals that we had just talked about. Um, okay, so, so a couple things. Everyone make sure you see how the goals associate each strategy because we're keeping in mind how we want to phrase the goals but also i'd like to just open up the floor to anyone who has specific comments about specific strategies if especially if there's any changes desired and if if no one has anything if they still need time to think about it i i have one maybe two <laughs> is number uh, 10 like written in a way that we can do something about it? Does Mike, I guess that's a question for you. Uh, I can read it for those who can't see it. Um, so number 10 says many programs exist to provide incentives to offset some of the increased cost of meeting preservation standards for his, um, for historic commercial properties, including grants, tax credits, and tax stabilizations. Owner occupied homes do not acts, do not access have access. Oh, yeah, it should have, yeah, probably need some wordsmithing. Any similar opportunities, but may need to meet the same requirements as commercial properties. The HPC would like to conduct a study to see what options the city has to create a program to help those properties with some financial assistance. If it is viable, the, uh, if a viable option is identified, then the HPC would like to implement the findings from that study. Okay, so if you, so that seems like kind of non-committal. I just wanted to make sure we weren't going to commit ourselves to something that we didn't think we could do. Yeah, I yeah, and I I think all they're looking at is is the, the study portion of it. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Kirby. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I and I like that they're going to look at that. Um, mine actually goes to so num for number nine. Um, I don't love how it says limit development. Um, the zoning regulations are perhaps the most well-known set of local regulations and are used to limit development in order to protect and promote the health. I don't think our plan is about limiting development. In many, many places, it's very much about not doing that. And, and, and that's not how I view what the zoning regulations that we passed as something that's like the goal is to limit development in any way. Yeah. Yeah, probably not the best word, probably not the best word choice there. Right. But, but if you're into historic res preservation, I mean, you might want to limit development. That was kind of an arguably like a goal of historic preservation, um, like I said, arguably. Uh, but anyway, I think to, to make it fit better, we can just make it say the local regulations are used to delete everything up into, to protect and promote the health. 
So it just says they're used to protect and promote health, leaving out the part about limiting development to do that. Hey, is, that, is that a change that's okay with everyone? I'm fine with it. It seems like the whole sentence is unnecessary. Like we don't need to explain what zoning regulations are. <laughs> Fair. I mean, I, I guess it gives some context or some, it's like an introductory sentence for the, the yeah, I mean, a little bit. How, how much do we want to focus on cutting out words? I don't know. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, and I, I think there'll be a little bit of, of Smith, wordsmithing that'll come around later as well, because we also talked about, you know, whether this, you know, ultimately you're going to see unified development regulations showing up in every single chapter. Um, and the question is, should they all be referring to one singular? Um, should they all be going back? In which case you would want to have an introductory sentence to explain what zoning is, and then you're going to have all these bullets, because um, eventually we've got to go back and, and connect when tax stabilization is here, it's going to have to be the same tax stabilization as economic development and housing and all these other places where it shows up as a tool. If we're going to make this a, you know, every, you know, a, a consistent list of strategies. Um, you know, there's only one tax stabilization program and it's going to eventually include all places where it is, unless we're going to just have it different for each chapter, which I'm, I'm happy with. I was going to write it this way. In which case the introductory sentence doesn't matter quite so much. But I think we can get to some of that details. A little bit of the details we can start polishing up later on too. I mean, I think we're still doing some shaping here. Well, I'd be, I'd be in favor of just going and cutting those words out now because I'd like to see that not slip through and then we could cut it down even more um, later. So is there, is is uh, uh, how about how about I phrase it this way? If if anyone's opposed to taking out the limit development part, speak up. Okay. Well, I already deleted it, so. <laughs> fine with it. I think it's fine. Okay. Very proactive, Mike. I like this. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, uh, does anyone else have anything? I have, I have another thing I could bring up. Do it. Bring it up. Okay. Uh, strategy A about the tax stabilization. So this is a bigger policy discussion, and I know this is something that we do now. I'm, I'm not sure if I – I just want to bring it up because it's a policy thing for us to discuss, but I'm not convinced that there's much additionality here. Like this, and when I said talk about additionality, I'm talking about when you, you have a policy where you're spending money, are you sure that you're actually changing behavior or are you just paying for something someone's gonna do anyway? And tax stabilization seems to be one of those. Uh, so like, like so I just have that as a question, like, is there really additionality here? And I'd also be interested to know what, what it costs each year. Do we know yeah, that, so, Mike? Well, as I worked on these, what I, what I did was twofold. One was to look at what we are doing already. So I would go to the HPC and sometimes they didn't even realize some of these were already built in. Um, but I, I would try to take as, as big and a, a picture as I could of all the things that we do to try to implement this and try to find find these places and tax stabilization was one of the places where we do have um, strategies set up to um, and I think one of the part of it goes to um, if somebody's doing a project uh, you don't always get it's not an automatic thing you've got to get city council to agree to it and so what are the things you need to do in order to get tax stabilization. And most of them come down to economic things, but there are a handful of things that are that are policy related. Um, so if if you want to get um, part of it, then you need to, you know, you could lose your tax stabilization by taking a historic building and tearing it down and replacing it. 
um, it could make you ineligible for tax stabilization. Um, you know, and, and really it's a question is, you know, as you say, in one perspective, you know, should we be doing it at all? Um, I think that's a, a bigger, bigger question. Um, you know, um, in the same way that, you know, should we, or sh should we, or should we not have zoning regulations? Is it, you know, how effective is it at, at, at accomplishing the goals that we want? I mean, the reality right now is we have it. Um, and, and the same with tax stabilization is, um, I think ultimately we would have to look at any one of these to go through and say, are we, you know, well, so can a, can a property owner get tax stabilization by simply following what they have to do under the ordinance anyway? Under the zoning bylaws anyway? Uh, these are above and beyond requirements okay. usually. So a business, um, and it's stabilized for up to 50% of the municipal portion. So you don't get stabilized on this, on this education, only on the municipal and it's up to five years, and then you've got a couple of bonus points that you could get that could get it out to maybe eight or nine years, I think. Um, okay. But um, providing me. salaries that are at a livable wage. Um, so you have to have a demonstration and you have to provide a livable wage for the period of time that you're in tax stabilization. You need to, um, so there are a bunch of things that are above and beyond what we require. And usually it's, it's, important. I'll, I'll stick up for tax stabilizations. I'm a big advocate of them um, because a lot of times we need them for larger projects that that take time to, let's say, um, to, to start making their money. Um, so if it takes, uh, you know, we've got, you know, a potential housing project that may go in that'll take a year, a year plus to develop um, and um, the, the cost of the of paying taxes and doing everything during the development can end up affecting the the pro forma and these are you know you're not people don't make a ton of money building building housing right now um it's expensive to build um it's going to take time to get those units sold and occupied so usually we'll stabilize the properties for a portion of time so they can help to get their their pro formas in order um, we've done a number of these and usually you make the money back pretty quick, especially if you're talking about a bigger project. Um, uh, Pat Malone got one for the Grossman's lot, uh, there, there, he had a large cost that he paid. He got some loans, got some, um, things to help with the Brownfield, but a lot of that was a Brownfield cleanup project. So, you know, he got a tax stabilization for that. Um, I think Fred Connor got one for down uh, the, the granite shed on granite shed lane right now that's getting developed. Uh, Caledonia Spirits got one for their building. Um, yeah, so so I mean, obviously tax civilization's much broader than just the historic preservation, but I, I was just getting at the historic preservation part of it. Like if if you're renovating and you, yeah, but you're saying you have to, if you're if you're renovating a historic property, you you have to go above and beyond the, bylaws. Yeah. And usually these tax stabilizations, you've got to be putting in a significant amount of money to get into tax stabilization. Um, because remember, you still have to pay the current taxes. So if you've got, you know, if you've got a historic building that's worth a million dollars, you don't get that stabilized down. You have to keep paying on that million dollar property. But if you're turning a million dollar property into a $4 million property, then we might stabilize half of that $3 million increase in taxes. Um, to help defray the costs of, of, you know, and then we have to go through and say, okay, well, if you want the tax stabilization, you need to be doing these other, these other pieces. Um, and for us, it helps to be an incentive to get people to make investments in their properties. Um, and ours are not as generous. Barry city has a much more generous and there, there's is 10 years, a hundred percent. And they'll even cover your, your school portion, which is kind of yeah. remarkable. Hmm. And that's for, for renovated properties in addition to new ones? Uh, yeah, I mean, you have to be putting in, you know, it, it's a, it, the program's usually tiered based on how much you're improving the property. So okay. it, it could be an improved, it could be a new building. Um, you know, tec technically Pat Malone's building was a, was a renovation and addition. Um, but okay, well, we, don't, we don't need that. We don't need to spend any more time. I mean, that's a really big 
topic that's like beyond the scope. So, so I'm, I'm glad to, to learn a little bit more about that though, but, but I'm satisfied. It's, it's fine. Uh, does anyone else have any strategies they want to ask about or propose changes to? So like, in other words, would every, is everyone fine to, to vote on the strategies as they are? Do we vote on the yeah. strategies or are we going to take it all as a group, like go back to the goals and I'm, I'm thinking, well, I, we're going to go back to the goals, but I'm thinking we'll, we'll do the goals and strategies the implementation section as its own thing, apart from the chapter. Like we, we won't, we won't combine the vote with the chapter. Sorry. We're the goals and strategies implementation or yeah. the implementation part. Yeah, all, everything on this spreadsheet will do is one vote. I'm yeah, thinking. yeah, okay, okay. But 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 the the narrative part will do separate. Sure, that's fine. Okay, so would it make sense to go back to the goals then? Now that we've looked through the strategies. Yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so yeah, so with the strategies in mind, do we <clears throat> do we want to change the goals? I'm feeling like on the first one, if if we're worried about confusion being like Montpelier at large's understanding of its historic resources, we could say improve the city's understanding or of its own historic resources or improve city government's understanding of its historic resources or something like that. Um would we want to put in a word. historic preservation commission? Would we, I'm, I'm just throwing that as an idea. I mean, what if improving the word yeah. understanding is what's misleading about it though. Uh, knowledge of, awareness of. <laughs> like as an institution, the city does not have the ability to understand things or <laughs> gain the, <laughs> We've anthropomorphized like the, <laughs> no. the city here. Fair, fair enough. So maybe the documentation, as much as I, I kind of wasn't sure about that, that might not actually be. It's well, like that's not why a sex, it's not a sexy word, but it's probably accurate. It's yeah, probably the that's most why accurate. I was saying city government. Like if we actually call it a person, city government, so that's a that could be understand or knowledge. I agree. The city itself can't understand, but we were confused at the beginning about whether it was the city at large or city leadership. I think we want to understand this the our historic resources of the city at large. But um, but not not necessarily have everyone in the city understand it. So it's like city government's understanding of the city's historic resources, but city government itself cannot, cannot understand things. It can. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe it's documentation or roster or what's the word for the. I had said identify earlier. I think knowledge and identify. I think those those words get at what those strategies are. So what were the words you had, Kirby, originally? You you had an, like identify. I had said identify and understand historic resources, but uh, if we want to avoid understand, I mean, it could be something like improve the identification and knowledge of Montpelier's historic resources. Or identify things that haven't already been identified. Is that part of, I mean, that's kind of what we're talking about with the survey strategies, right? Yeah, I mean, Mike has document there. I mean, I, that's that's fine with me. I mean, the I think document, John wrote the word document. Uh, uh, yeah, identify and document the city's historic, city's historic resources. resources. I think that that is a huge improvement in my view. I like yeah. it for yeah. for clarity. Identifying documents, cities, historic resources. 
I mean, that's not saying who understands it, it's just saying we should identify and document the city's historic resources. And that's really what we're trying to do in A, B, and C. Yeah. Or in you know, in, in the goal in the strategies we talked about. Does anyone have any uh, more suggestions? I'm fine with that. What do you think, John and Aaron? I'm fine with that. Okay. I guess my question, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm kind of mulling this over, but are we really talking about sort of accurately inventorying the resources? Is that, as opposed to, is that the core of like this understanding not that we're trying to work around? Yeah, so Mike, could you hop over to the strategies and just, just say, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, the inventory inventorying isn't isn't a bad word either. We just have to pick which word we want to use. Um, so we're talking. Go ahead. Yeah, we're just talking. We're talking about. I mean, what the historic preservation thinks of is is they want to have a historic surveys program where we do these historic surveys, we do the Capitol Dome study, um, and then this is really just the, the the CLG, which provides funding to do these all these types of activities. Um, so really, this is what they plan to do to to understand, and this is basically an inventory. And and those are the three, the only three strategies related to that goal. Yep. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, I think it's just we assume that the list that we have now is good but not complete. There's holes we need to fill. Yeah, what we what we have surveyed in our national register is just our historic district. We have a handful of individual structures, so we have our historic district, but our historic district does not include the meadow, uh, the college, um, um, Pioneer Street, uh, Cliffside. Uh, there's a lot of things that are not included in that historic district in that historic survey. And what the HPC wants to be able to do is to go out and start to inventory some of these additional neighborhoods that are historic um, and then get them also to have their own nominations. Oh yeah, maybe, I don't know if it's worth putting that in the goal, but that's helpful to know that, helpful to define it that way in that we have, we have identified and documented city historic resources within this particular zone. And so we're trying to grow it from there, like, can, like push that boundary out. I, I was I was thinking that if we wanted to stick with this, the consistent verbiage, like the evolve, transform stuff, I mean, we could use the word expand, expand the identification and documentation of the city's historic resources. Mm, yeah, beyond the this district, existing district or something like that. We could also use the word evolve, which is that sounds weird. <laughs> yeah. I know. I, I, I know. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know how to to, to kind of work that in. I, I mean, I, I don't think that first one's necessarily too too far off. I think we could probably explain the nuances of that in the chapter. Yeah, there is the chapter does go into some of some of these, and, and I think, and I think we had that conversation last time as well. A number of times we talk about strategies. Oh, and I should also point out, before I forget, we have the tab for reserve strategies. You'll see in the reserve strategies, if you're interested, all of the things that got cut out. So if anyone is interested, there were a number of things that either we had all agreed to take out or that we said, you guys are trying to bite off too much. We're putting all these into, a, into, into the, I think we called it a bike rack at one time. Mm -hmm. We're going to bicycle rack these guys. Um, so there is there are these other ones that either we cut or um, we bike racked. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be against having at least one strategy, by the way, that, that touches on the archeology span aspect, that historic in Vermont does go back beyond white people. Um, and I think, I think we have bike there's, racks there's a number, study on that. Yeah, there's a number of reserve strategies and that they yeah. go farther back in time. 
Yeah, the survey of archaeologically sensitive areas. They, they wanted to conduct a survey of archaeologically sensitive areas and map those resources. Um, but that was, again, they're looking at this. This is something they do feel we need to do, but what you have here is the eight years. This is what we're doing between now and 2030. Um, these other ones are ones that we'd, we'd like to do at some point, but we don't think if we're going to be strategic, we don't think that fits in our timeline here. Um, they prioritized, and again, this is their prioritization. You guys have the right to adjust it. Their priority is that they wanted to do uh, the meadow and the college um, historic districts were their next two, and they thought that would take the full eight years to get those two surveys done. And in addition to doing these outreach programs where they want to get more walking tours, which they used to do and, and fix the website. Um, and there is a, and to do their design review guide, which they're doing right now. Um, and if they have time, they wanted to do this owner occupied thing. The rest of these we do already. Grant writing we already do, unified development regulations we already do. So uh, is there <clears throat> is there any desire to add strategies or you guys want to just leave them? I'm fine leaving them. I agree with you, Kirby. I mean, I, I think just that what you just said kind of gets back to the, the equity part and diversity. And I would like that to show through every chapter. Um, I also think we could... I also think if it's just too much, we can just note it, note something that this is all in service of heading in that direction. And we'll get more specific next time. I think we should also yeah. remind ourselves that we're a city of like 7,000 some odd people. And there's also regional and state programs that do a lot of, um, do a lot of good and can help us accomplish some of these goals and, it feels like sometimes we try to maybe try to take take too much on unnecessarily. Like I can't imagine any kind of archaeology program that the city would run. No, I think if if that went somewhere, my my putting on you know as planning director, my hat would have been to to have them do hire a consultant. You know, get your CLG grant to do an archaeological survey of, and, and really it's not digging in the ground as much as it is kind of doing what, you know, in a brownfield, you'd call it maybe a phase one assessment. You, you're kind of going through and looking at the books and looking at where you would expect these things to happen. Um, where would the archeologically sensitive areas be in Montpelier? And then um, map them out. And then you move on to part, you know, these G3 programs. And we start looking at, you know, do we, uh, do we put that map in connection with um, something in the Unified Development Regulations, where if you're going to be doing excavation, then you've got to, you know, in a, in a highly sensitive area. And who, I don't know how big that is, um, you know, until you get the survey done, you don't, don't know how big it is. Maybe it's a relatively small area, which you document and say, if you're going to do excavation within this area, then you need an archaeological X clearance. Um, and I don't know what that is. And I don't necessarily agree that that should be the, the, the strategy, but that's how I would be taking, you know, if we were going to attack it locally, that's kind of how we have to do it because we're not going to have archaeologists on staff. Um, but we do in our design review regulations say that if you're going to impact a, you know, if you're going to demolish a historic structure anywhere in the city, anything that's contributing, um, you have to have a Section 106 report done, which is kind of a federal report that documents uh, the historic significance of the doc of, of the structure. So that way, you know, a historic preservationist go in, goes in and evaluates the building. And in some cases, it's just an old building, and we get it documented as to what it is and what's there. And you know, sometimes the report comes back and says, "Yeah, it's okay to demolish this structure," um, uh, and and but we want X, Y, and Z um, as much as we can. In other cases, it comes back and it says, no, this, this, this should not be demolished because of these unique features of this 
um, of this building. But you know, so we do sometimes kind of glom onto some of these federal things to kind of go through and say, hey, we want a report just like that. Uh, we want a section 106 report, even though this isn't, you know, section 106 is a federal requirement. We ask for that if you're going to demolish a structure. And maybe there's a similar thing for archaeology. If there's a similar archaeology thing, maybe we say if you're going to dig in a highly sensitive archaeological area, then we're going to want an archaeological report of X. My, my thinking wasn't about what didn't go like to a regulatory place. My thinking just went to a, if we're trying to identify historic resources and if that's like a, something we want to expand on doing, then learning about where likely archaeological resources are could be part of that. And it's not focusing on just like pretending like Montpelier started existing, you know, 200 years ago. Um, but I'm not like dedicated to, to forcing that in. I mean, I, 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 yeah, as others have said, our resources are limited, but I would be open to it if we wanted to, to include the archaeological survey, but also not a big deal. Yeah, I mean, I kind of agree with Mar Marcella that um, I'm really interested in threading it through every chapter, but I wonder if there's a way to do it, not so much through archaeology, but maybe as we refine these, like adding some focus or you know something more explicit in the in the focus about it. If that makes sense. Like, um, like uh, whoa, <laughs> sorry. Um, like a marker, sorry, a historical mark, you know, something like that, which may not be, I yeah, guess. Yeah. Anyway. yeah, I think that that makes sense. So again, these these aren't final. We're we're putting these together, and you know, at some point when we go through, if we do, um, uh, you know, a, a social justice and an equity chapter. You know, we're going to have a second shot, third shot, fourth shot at going through and saying, you know, you know, now that we've now that we put it all together, we want to see that that archaeological, you know, um, study done in there, and we want to make sure it has that particular reference. Um, that you know, we're not talking about getting it into G three, which is preservation. We just want it in G one, which is understanding, um, understanding our resources. And yeah, MG2. I mean, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, and maybe outreach, you know, having people understand and appreciate the fact that there is, um, you know, and it really comes down to what you find. Once you find something, it's kind of like, you know, Highgate is a classic case because it's got Indian burial grounds and burial mounds. And, you know, um, just understanding that that's what's there is one thing. Um, getting people, the community to understand that that those that that those mounds that you see are actually Indian burial mounds. Um, and that's a, you know a second piece of getting people to understand and appreciate those um, historic archaeological, uh, you know, because it's bigger than just archaeology. Um, it goes to a, a bigger picture, a bigger story that we want to tell. So if I'm if I'm following the discussion though, no one's proposing adding a strategy right now. I don't think so, no. Okay. Uh, in that case, um, let's go back to, to the goals and see if everyone's fine with goal two as it's phrased. Um, we, earlier, we talked about how that could be made more measurable by adding create opportunities to the beginning of it. So create opportunities to increase the community's appreciation for historic resources. Makes it slightly more measurable than increase because we can at least look at the opportunities that we created, which is what strategies to go strategy to or stra strategies related to goal to go to different opportunities for appreciation, such as neighborhood tours and things. Yeah. Do, do we want to do we want to add something about create opportunities or do we want to just leave it 
Are we creating opportunities or are we increasing the number of opportunities? I don't know really what exists currently, if any of that stuff. I mean, the designated downtown program is in support of gold too, and that exists already, so. We don't have much though that exists yeah. now. Yeah, they're, they're more trying to recreate some old, re, you know, rehash some old ideas that they've had. You know, they used to do, um, they used to have historic walks and they used to have a number of things like that. Um, and so now they kind of want to bring it back and they feel if they formalize it into a program, then you've got somebody who can go through, hey, annually, you know, we're going to have our annual meeting for Historic Preservation Commission this week. What's our work plan for this year? You know, how are we going to do public outreach? And I think that's what they, they that's how they plan to use this document is to be able to, you know, uh, set, set, you know, be benchmarks for themselves. You know, we wanted to do at least three of these. What are the three that we we're going to do? When are we going to do them? Who is going to do them? Um, yeah. You know, most of them tie into things like the farmer's market and, and, and stuff. So that's what they're, um, that's how they'll, they, they look to use this. Okay, I would say like increase or establish new opportunities for community to appreciate its historic resources. Why don't you just say increase opportunities for community appreciation of historic resources? Yeah, I'm fine with that. For community, oh what wait, we? Uh, for communities, opportunities for community to appreciate historic resources. No, it's, it's just a increase opportunities for community appreciation for historic resources or of historic resources. Yeah, I like that. So we're increase, increase opportunities or increase yeah, that increase opportunities. You can delete what you have highlighted. Yes, it, All right. Increase for opportunities. Appreciation of of its historic of uh, of its or of ours. No, just I would just say of historic resources. Yeah, I think that's good. Missing a extra space in there. Okay, what about goal three? My thought on goal, sorry. Go ahead. My thought on goal three is, I, it's more, so it's not, I guess I'm having a hard time distinguishing between improving upon city's protection. To me, like improving our protection of historic resources means like we need to do a better job at what we're already doing. But I thought it, it seems like they're looking for new and different ways to provide opportunities for people to protect or protect historic resources. So it's less about like, we just need to do a better job and more about let's be creative about different ways to incentivize or provide opportunities for people to better take care of historic resources, whether they're businesses or homes. I, I agree with that. I, um, don't have this the sense that that we we need to do a bunch of things a whole lot better so uh, and the places where it suggests that seems to be kind of i don't know at odds with, with what we're actually doing mm -hmm. so maybe can continue and establish new methods of continue existing Ugh, I'm trying to make it short continue existing just cut out and prove upon. Just continue the city's protection of historic resources. Yeah, but isn't there also trying to find new creative ways like the number 10 study preservation program options for owner occupied? And I would say that what grant writing is kind of trying to look for new opportunities. We're already doing that. Yeah, what if. What if we tried to tack this on this idea onto the end? So what if we had continue the city's 
I'm still not, I, I, I personally wasn't a big fan of, of how, you know, cities protection of historic resources. I kind of like it seems a little. I mean, yeah, continue to protect historic resources. It's if you, if brevity is yeah, your whole continue to, man. yeah, continue to protect. But I thought that the updates to protect the city's historic resources. And, and this is where I thought maybe if we wanted to, you know, and identify, I'm just gonna throw something out. Mm -hmm. New new incentives for, for new protection strategies. Investment continue. Right. Continue and create new means to protect historic resources. I mean, we can put it in either side. I was just thinking if we shifted it to the end, but we can we can keep them in the front. I think we know what we want. I think we just got to figure out how to say it. What was that one you just said, Aaron, was continue? Continue and create new means to protect historic resources. And then I was saying continue and improve upon the city's protection of historic resources and identify new incentives for investment or identify new methods of protection if we don't want to get specific about investing money or we want to yeah, keep it to protect a, that's a new means of protection means of protection yeah so yeah yours is probably clear like more concise i'd be fine i'm fine with that move uh move to use errands i'm good with errands yeah the identify new methods for protection. Is that it's, what he said? Yeah, it's, just it's this one down here. Continue and create new means to protect. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I'll switch if you guys are. Yeah, I think yeah. I don't hear no. anybody saying no. Fine, fine by me. Okay. Ariane and John, do you have an objection? Sounds good. Nice and concise. I'm, I'm right. a firm believer in the strunk and white approach to everything. <laughs> Sometimes you have to write it out super long before you can put it into that super concise thing. <laughs> That's my right. preface. Yeah, well, they, you have to write the words. Yeah, let's go over to let's go over to energy and see how far we get. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we should. Um, yeah, for the for the chapter portion of this, I went ahead and and did a little strunk and white with it. So, um, wait, what are the two words you're saying? He's he's referring to a legal writing book. Strunk and white. Oh, I know well, that. Strunk and white is not illegal. It's a. It's just a. It's, it's elements, the elements of style. style of like E. B. Yeah. White and Unof unofficially illegal writing book. Yeah, but their whole thesis is but, omit needless words. But uh, uh, before we actually move on to the chapter, let's let's go ahead and oh. vote uh, on the uh, implementation strategy. So, does anyone have any? I'm sorry, what are we voting on specifically? I apologize. On on the, the goals and strategies here. I vote to approve the goals and strategies for now and move along. Yes, I'll second that. Okay. So we have a motion from Marcella and a second from Marianne. To, to be specific, it's to approve the aspiration, goals, and strategies that we have here in the template and to not include the reserve strategies. Correct. Yeah. So those those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Okay, so we've done a thing, an official thing with the city plan now. Feels pretty good. So now I got a decent idea of how you guys are thinking about this, so that will help going forward. Happy to help. Uh, yeah, so so I, earlier today I went through to sort of uh, speed things along here uh, and, and put in some suggestions. So you'll see I, I wasn't overly picky. I just really just in places where I felt like it, it needed to be more succinct did that. So you see the first sentence is changed to Montpelier's historic resources are important because they connect us to our past. Some resources are from our recent past, invisible to all, while others are from indigenous persons thousands of years ago and still buried in the soil. So, uh, so, I, so I made these changes. I don't need to walk through all of these. Uh, I don't know, how, how does everyone want to do it? Do you want to walk through it like I just started and, change, and like do more wordsmithing as we go? Or do we want to read it individually and just point out places that we would want to make changes. What do people think is the most productive? And if we don't have a, I don't know. If we if we don't have feedback, we'll, let's just let's just walk through it then. Maybe we won't do this for all of them, but this is our first one. Let's just walk through it then. Okay. So so I'm gonna I'm gonna just read through. If it's okay with you, Mike, do you feel like you need to do any intro explanation or anything? So yeah, I'll just I'll just walk through it. This is the text of the chapter itself, and stop me anytime anybody wants to, um, or you can wait till the end. Either one. So we get through the first two sentences, and then it says historic markers, buildings, bridges, and districts all represent the the story of how we became Montpelier. It makes who we are today. We are more likely to recognize a picture of Montpelier not by the people and landscape, but by the particular buildings and bridges that make up our city's built environment from the state house, the granite sheds. So obviously this is just, um, you know, lead in background. We'll stuff. have some pretty photos, right? Yes. Yeah. The whole point of there'll be photos and, and those maps that are talked about later will, will be inserted as appropriate. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, sheds to the downtown commercial blocks, Montpelier's pride and sense of place shines through its historic architecture. Uh, the next one I didn't make any changes for. I just left it Montpelier as one documented historic district and 535 uh, contributing structures, four official historic markers, a handful of individual structures on the National Register of Historic Places, and one national landmark, the Vermont State House. The Montpelier Historic District is the largest in Vermont and is one of the most intact districts anywhere. We've maintained our district over the years through a little luck, the dedication of building owners, as well as efforts by the public at large to fund preservation efforts. I would probably change as well as to and, actually. Yeah. Flows better. And there's two efforts there. So and the and effort by maybe just and by. Sure. Through a little luck, through the dedication, and by yeah. Supporting and by the public at large, supporting funding of preservation efforts. We don't have a complete sentence anymore. Uh, actually, we could just take off to fund preservation efforts there. We've maintained our district, blah, 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 and by the public at large. I don't know. And by public support at large? Uh, about more, more public support, period. Through our, through our preservation efforts. Yeah, that's good. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so as the state capital, Montpelier has a unique arrangement with the state government where the capital complex commission manages an area around the state house and is charged with protecting the historic character of the district. The historic structures that surround the capital complex are part of the city's design overlay district and are protected locally through special rules and unified development regulations. Should it be the unified development regulations? Yeah, probably. Uh, despite the well-documented nature of the downtown, much of the rest of the city needs additional study and protection. Some older state surveys are incomplete or outdated, and the design review rules and various preservation programs mostly do not apply to these areas. 
The city's Historic Preservation Commission is working on three fronts to improve the documentation of historic resources, to increase the public's understanding and appreciation of historic resources, and to continue to improve our protection of these resources through financial programs and fair regulations. So I didn't have anything there. Um, and so the sub, one thing that we can keep in mind when we go through these is Mike's wanting to, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, but I, I take it that you want to keep basically the same subheadings throughout. So all of the chapters will have these same subheadings. So the next one is how do historic resources relate to other chapters? So we'll and, have and that. And we may go chapter. through, you know, in the same way that we had templates before, I will write it in this way, but when we actually make the chapter, it may not word for word always say the exact same thing. We may put a different header, but really this is talking about how this resource and maybe how the energy plan relates to other chapters may not specifically say that, but the idea is these are the contacts, the chapter, the little sub chapters that we want to have talked about. So as I develop the next one, I'll put that header in, even if we don't use headers at all, um, or we change those headers to different words. That's the idea. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a nice thing to do if someone's trying to, if they're trying to read every chapter, then they'll get they'll get to know what to expect, which is which seems like a good thing for this kind of document. I have I have some suggestions further down. You'll see for some of these subheadings, though. Uh, the success of our historic downtown district and structures have a direct impact on a number of other chapters in this plan. For example, approximately two thirds of our residents live in historic structures, the housing plan, and the historic buildings of our downtown provide the foundation of much of our tourism economy, economic development plan. Additionally, historic character is found as defining term. This is found as a defining term in many of the neighborhood descriptions in our land use plan and district and zoning districts. When it comes to the energy plan, our I want to make sure that every time we refer to the plan is capitalized, and it is. Okay. When it comes to the energy plan, our historic buildings offer both challenges and opportunities. Historic buildings were not built with modern energy efficient materials, so the city must be careful to balance efficiency upgrades with loss of historic integrity. There's also a great deal of energy saved in restoring buildings rather than tearing them down and rebuilding. According to the Vermont Agency of Commerce and Community Development, approximately 11% of global CO2 emissions can be attributed to new building material and construction. Maintaining and rehabilitating existing buildings will extend the life and cycle of these materials and reduce the growing carbon impacts of new construction in the life cycle, okay. Uh, some final historic resource challenges involve the, I'm not sure if we need to say his final there, but I mean, it's a new picky thing. Some final historic resource challenges involve the health and safety of many historic buildings. Built before codes were in place, many historic buildings contain lead paint and other hazardous, hazardous materials, lack access for persons with disabilities and were built in flood plains rather than proper mitigation or without proper mitigation and resilience to damage. This has challenges and costs to future innovations, but with proper preservation techniques, these buildings can be brought up to code and still provide all the value described earlier in this plan. So one substantive thing that I uh, proposed to cut out there when I did my edits was the sprinklers. Um, that's partly to acknowledge that we've gotten rid of the residential sprinkler requirement. I, I understand that there's still a commercial ones that are uh, building codes, but um, I don't know. I just thought it would be better to not try to emphasize sprinklers as as as, as important as these other things. I yeah, one of the one of the state programs, uh, and the reason why it was in there is just there the um, some of the grants that we apply for, especially for commercial buildings, is that uh, historic buildings in the de in the designated downtown qualify for the sprinkler tax credits, which are to help historic buildings get sprinklers added to them if they don't have them. Um, we don't really talk about that too much elsewhere, but that that was why it was there. I don't think it's a big loss if it's not included. Um, but the state grants that come through um, include accessibility, uh, sprinklers, uh, hazardous materials, um, and facade improvements. But you know, not there. But um, I'm I'm not I'm fine with your with your edits. Um, I was just explaining that's that's where it kind of came from. Does anybody feel compelled to throw sprinklers in there? No, I got two little things though. 
So the final historic resource challenges involve the health and involve health and safety considerations of many historic buildings. Where I don't think I mean health and safety of the buildings doesn't make sense. And then true. Good point. So take take out the the after involve. For health and safety, yeah. There's a the. And then uh, I'm thinking instead of on the third line and we're built in floodplains, we could do or we're built in floodplains, just noting that, or and or noting that buildings can have a smattering of these things. Yeah, that's good. Anything else? Anyone else? Okay. So for the next subheading, this summarize information about Montpelier. I, I, I mean, I take it that was like a placeholder type thing because it doesn't seem like a typical one. So I, I had suggested here that we put summary of past es efforts, which is what I think this is. Um, if anyone else has another idea, but again, this is going to be, I'm expecting that these are going to be the same subheadings more or less in every chapter. So. Uh, yeah, so we talked a little bit about this, and you know, I don't know if we finally nailed it down. Um, whether or not we should kind of make the plan and the website a bit of a clearinghouse of of, of data. Um, you know, we certainly don't have to keep this all in here. Um, we could certainly put it in in a, in a web in the city website separate from the city plan. In which case, we may not need all of this, but um, it's been suggested. So I've, I've started to kind of build these things in, but it's, again, it's an option to consider. Um, I mean, most of what I've been trying to do is to keep the focus on the future and not to spend a lot of time talking about, you know, patting ourselves on the back and all the stuff we've done in the past. It is good to note the things that we've done. Um, but uh, again, it's just, I was just wanted to get that thrown out so we have an idea. I, I think it is helpful for people who are interested to know some of the background. I think it's it's worthwhile, and to, and and I like that it's at the end basically. Yeah, we can rearrange the paragraphs at any point as well if we decide. Hey, we want this goals and strategies to be above this, and then have the summary of past efforts last. We can, you know, it's just a cut and paste. Later on, we change the order. Yeah, I'm, I'm personally fine with the order, but if anybody else has thoughts about it. Uh, okay, I'm gonna continue reading then. Summary of past efforts. Much of our modern historic preservation efforts can be traced back to the Historic Preservation Act of 1966, which was passed. We should probably have a comm after 1966. Um, which was passed in response to the destruction of historic buildings from highway construction and urban renewal projects. Although Montpelier's historic downtown was mostly spared from highway destruction and major urban renewal efforts, it did suffer the loss of a number of stately buildings during this, that time. This includes the Pavilion Hotel and the Montpelier Post Office building. In response, the state and city started a number of historic preservation efforts that continue up to today. Uh, I'm not gonna read through this entire list, but it looks like staff is going to like polish this up. I, I see there's things in brackets and question marks. And so I'm yeah, taking there'd be a lot of stuff we've got to populate. Um, so yeah, I didn't focus too much on this. I, I did highlight this one thing that where I wanted to make sure you guys know to change that. When, when was the design review added to zoning? It was like an internal question kind of. Uh, but it, I went ahead and capitalized some things and reworded a little bit there, but mostly acknowledge that there's going to be some more updating there. Uh, and then the maps and tables come after this, which is another thing that it looks like is going to be filled in later. So I didn't really focus on this either. Yeah, and these are probably, the maps and tables are probably not going to be separate. I just put them separate um, just so everybody remembers every chapter, uh, within certain chapters, there are required maps. Um, every plan has to have a transportation map and a land use map. So the reason why it's kind of separated out is just to make sure we recognize what ones are required. Um, but we probably wouldn't have a maps and tables section 
these maps and tables would then be incorporated above in the introduction and throughout the, the document. I've just pulled them out to go through and say, here is here are the maps that will be integrated somewhere. Sounds good. Uh, so at the bottom here, or near even even farther down here, so so maybe the summary of the past thing could be moved down because I I've forgotten that we have these. Um, aspiration and goals. So, so there's a section explaining, it really explains just the aspiration though, right? I mean, I guess in a way the paragraphs explain the goals too. Um, but I, I, I don't know if we're going to have a blurb about this, I do wonder about where it could be located in the final form. Like, would this be help a helpful blurb to have in whichever form the final implementation, like at the top of the implementation strategy, even. I, don't know, just yeah. I, I didn't know if this was going to survive. I mean, my, my thought was um, I put it in here as as a thought, not knowing if it was going to survive. Um, I, I think it has some value um, to, to a reader. It, it, for people who want to kind of have an idea without getting into that whole document and, and you know as john had put together we could have this displayed as cards when we get to the implementation strategy or different ways of, of presenting that that's why we're doing it in that excel template so that way it can get drawn into a, a better display format for the web but people may just want to have an understanding of that conversation. That's why I did it, but I didn't know if it would be something you guys would want to keep, um, if it's helpful. I, I think it would, I think it would, it provides some helpful context if, if it's located where people are looking at the implementation strategy. Yeah, I agree. I think on the, sh we should keep them on the shorter side. I think that I like having a little bit of a blurb. So if we have a separate page for an implementation strategy, maybe this is at the top of that page before we get into the, if let's say there's a separate web page, we've got one web page for the chapter and then it kind of links to another page for the implementation strategy. And at the top of the implementation strategy, these two pieces could be kind of dropped in the tops. So people, I, I don't know what the rest of it's going to look like. I don't know how those, that format will look. Um, I think that makes sense. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a good use of this. John, did you have, I know you had um, a lot of the vision for, for this stuff. Uh, does that match what you thought? Yeah, I think we can work with that. Okay. So, uh, so what we have here is aspiration and goals. Montpelier will strive to be a community that understands, appreciates, and preserves our historic resources. Uh, so that is the aspiration, uh, literally. While Montpelier has a number of excellent reports and resources, our understanding of our resources remains incomplete. We have some neighborhoods where additional historic districts may be appropriate. I changed wood to May. That's, I think, the only other substantive change that I made. And because I don't want to be presumptuous about whether at the end of the day, we actually do want to expand historic districts. And I imagine that will be at least a somewhat controversial thing to do if we did it. So made that a may be appropriate, such as the Meadow, College Street, and Pioneer Street. There are also many individual structures outside of districts that should be inventoried and mapped. We therefore are hoping to improve our understanding over the next eight years. Uh, Next paragraph, I just changed that to knowledge of our structures will only protect these resources if the community appreciates and values them. We believe that we need to do more to educate the public regarding the special character of Montpelier's historic environment. For example, our downtown and surrounding neighborhoods continue to be remarkably intact compared with other communities around the state and country. Overall, Montpelier has done a good job of protecting many of our historic resources, but we are always at risk. Once lost, they cannot be replaced. There are risks due to neglect, fires, poor redevelopment, and floods. We recognize that while we are doing a good job, there are gaps in our strategies. We will continue to improve not only our regulations, but also our programs that help property owners afford to maintain their homes and make improvements. Do we have any feedback for this section? I 
Okay. It's fine. Move on. Approaches to implementation. Um, so, so the. So yeah, this this is basically an explanation of the strategies, right, Mike? Yeah. Can we just call it implementation? Fine by me. Uh, the city has appointed a historic preservation commission. HPC and assign staff from the planning department to assist in the planning and implementation of the city's historic resources plan. As the commission is also a certified local government, this allows the city to apply for funds annually to continue to study local historic sites and structures and to develop applications for the National Register of Historic Places. That was a long, it's a pretty long sentence. I feel like I was, anyway. The work of the staff and commission using CLG funding is the foundation of the city's efforts to improve the understanding of our city resources. Outreach to the public is driven by, this is one I've struggled with changing. Outreach to the public is driven by the HPC efforts to coordinate, collaborate, and sponsor educational events, including developing a speaker series and hosting walking tours. The planning and community development staff will help the commission develop educational materials and to improve the city's website on topics related to historic preservation. Finally, the city has a two-pronged approach to preservation of historic buildings. The first is by providing incentives and, part and participating in programs that provide grants like the designated downtown program. The community development specialist, also part of the Department of Planning and Community Development, provides grant writing assistance to property owners who qualify for these grants. The second approach to protecting historic structures is through administration and enforcement of design review regulations that are part of the unified development regulations, also known as the zoning regulations. The planning and zoning administrator can assist with applications for projects in the design review overlay district. I'm just confused on the second sentence too. Is the com the commission is the certified local government? It's yeah. kind of both. Um, you need to have an HPC in order to qualify as a CLG, but officially the city is the CLG. Should, should we change it? We to just say the city's CLG designation allows us to apply for funds or something like that. Montpelier's certified local government de designation allows the city to apply for funds. Um, yeah, that sounds fine to me. So we'll. I don't know if somebody else already is in the system. There you go. Go ahead, type it in. Thanks. I'm gonna let you guys, I gotta quickly take care of something but I'll be back in two minutes. Okay. Uh, so I, I think we're done with the chapter, right? If you scroll down real quick before you leave, Mike. Oh, yeah, I just threw in a couple of benchmark ideas that were in there Okay. Um, that I didn't know where they were gonna go. And again, I think I, my thought on benchmarks is I would, I think we should wait till later to try to work on the, the actual benchmarks for these. Um, like I said, I'm doing some more work on them. I'd like to get a better idea of how to make them effective and not just have benchmarks for the sake of benchmarks. I really wanna have effective measurables. Okay. Um, so do, does anyone have any any thoughts before we vote here? Uh, I, As far as the, um, the only comments I have about benchmarks is that I think it's fairly obvious which of these things are measurable and can have benchmarks and I'm just kind of trusting the staff to to plug those in. Yeah, these were the things we were thinking we would like be able to update over the eight years and people could kind of see in real time what was happening, right? That was that discussion. This is the yeah. non-plan static plan portion, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I agree. We can push those off. I don't have any. I think that's kind of what we got. Outreach efforts and... I don't know if we, if, I don't know if there's a number of new districts that's actually a part, that's a goal here. I, mean, I don't think that. Yeah, it might be structured. We may decide that zero is the right number. Right, right. So maybe it's <laughs> zones <laughs> considered. I don't know. <laughs> but that's, that's not something that we need to yeah. decide before voting. We should just figure, like, whoever's going to do the work, we should just have them tell us what the best way for us to measure what they're doing is. If it's, you know, if they've, if they're going to consider, if there's a survey, we can, some, some, there's some way to break up and show what they're doing that will allow us to land at zero new structures if that's what is appropriate. Yeah. Uh, so do we have any discussion about the, the chapter here? Uh, and if we don't, are we ready to vote? I feel ready to vote. Yeah, I'll move approval of the chapter. Okay. With the, with the edits that we've. Yes. That we've made here and that I made earlier. Okay, do we have a second? A second. Okay, so those in favor of approving the chapter with all the edits displayed here, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we've approved the chapter, Mike. Thank you. See what happens when you leave? <laughs> Major things. We finally get some work done. <laughs> uh, okay. So, what time is it? Okay. So, we don't have time to get into the energy, but I think we were nonetheless productive. Uh, so, We'll plan for next time to do the energy chapter and the implementation strategy. Does that sound good? Yeah, and I think as you guys go, I'll just, if we've got a couple minutes, I'll just really quick go through and say, I think there's a lot of things going back to the original statement I said of not everything is exactly the way I would do it. Um, I think there's a number of things, I think, I can see compressing our aspirations into two and there are 19 goals, which I think and it's, it's tricky, but I think there are probably ways we can compress a number of these. Um, and then again, as I mentioned before, I won't populate the strategies until we've approved the aspirations and goals. Um, just because if we do make substantial changes up front, it may significantly change how I write the, the way the strategies are worded. So how, should we, how should we review the strategies, uh, the, other do, the, the other text documents? I, I wouldn't worry about the strategies right now. Okay. I would okay. probably, um, and so I, I did kind of start to think about how to approach these. Um, so I'm going to go through as many of these chapters as we can. And let me just go back to here. Um, so as many of these as we, as we, as I can, I'm going to try to populate all of the aspirations and goals. And as we go through them, we can approve them. And then, and then I can plug in the strategies because that those strategy tabs, if you remember, there, there's a lot of text that goes into them. Um, and there's a lot more work to do the strategies. This stuff here that I just did for energy, this was just cut and paste. This took, you know, this took, an, you know, an hour. Well, maybe this took a little more than an hour to do all these, but um, this doesn't take long to cut and paste in. And then I think the rest will kind of, kind of go once, once we approve, once we all agree, Hey, this is our aspiration. 
And these are our goals. Um, how we do it will be the next conversation. But, you know, if we don't agree on this, talking about the strategies um, is, is really moot. Um, so so that means we'll be, we'll be voting on the strategies later then. Yeah, we'll, we'll just focus yeah, on. I would think it in probably in the next meeting. So if we if okay. had we done these today, I would probably have the strategies ready to go for the next meeting. And, okay, so we'll pl we'll plan to do that. Will the chapter be ready then? If we don't have strategies, do you think you will be able to yeah. write up a you, chapter? You it's actually you actually have the chapter already. Yeah, we have it. Has, it's has, has, and that's one that Barb has edited previously. Bar Is that Barb has an edit. Um, here on the left, so hers energy plan BC is Barb's, and energy plan chapter is what I had written. Um, okay, so I have I have a question for the group then. Um, I did was everyone did everyone like the like free edits that I did today to try to save some time? Yeah, and I am gonna try to make a goal to do that myself. It just didn't happen for me today. Okay, well then. Uh, do you do you want to um, commit to doing pre edits on I guess Barb's version of the energy chapter? Yeah, can we? There's a way. Forgive my ignorance about this, but there's a way to just like track changes, right? It's suggestions. That's what I did today, so that you could see what was changed. Suggestions. Okay, I can do that. Change it yeah. to suggestions. Yeah, it'd be Which, good if we just did it all in the same document. Yeah, and but, but don't don't feel like you can't touch Barb stuff. Do it if you want. We can talk yeah. about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm happy. I will commit to looking through this for sure. Okay. I feel pretty overwhelmed by the number of strat of goals and aspirations and the specificity of them. <laughs> but I will do my best. <laughs> yeah. It, it was, it, they, I mean, they have big, they have big goals. So if you want to be net zero by 2030 and 2050, we're taking something really big and breaking it into a, a number of bite-sized pieces, um, some of which I think can be collapsed, but there's still, you're still talking about, um, you know, uh, electricity, thermal and transportation. And you're looking at that among existing and new and, um, and doing conservation energy efficiency and doing some, um, you know, new switch to renewables. Um, so there's just a, a number of different goals and they've got a number of benchmarks for those. So it really, it, it was tough because you break into so many small pieces to try to understand, okay, well, how do we tackle this slice of the pie? Um, so hopefully it makes a little bit of sense as you look through it. It's like, oh, okay, I see how they broke this into different slices. Um, okay. and, and don't worry about the strategies at this point. We'll, We'll get those, but just understanding the big picture of how they were trying to take a, they're, they're trying to eat, how do we eat the elephant? You know, yeah. one, one spoon, one bite at a time. Okay. So let's, let's plan to, let's plan to do those things next time. Um, if we're not going to be going through strategies, we might have some extra time. So we might, if you, if you can, Mike, have like a, a if there's another one that's on deck too, for us to go through, to just look at the goals and aspirations on as well. Yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll be plugging in a number of them at, over time. There's a lot in this, you know. Uh, we have natural resources. I can, I'll have that in, in plugged in there into the template. Um, we've got economic development. I can get plugged into the template. Uh, housing has all of it plugged into the template. Transportation, there's another one that we can put into the template. Um, and the housing those we can talk about. The housing groups, we're going to meet tomorrow, I believe, just so you know. And oh, we'll be okay. Doing some work on that. And whatever product we have, we'll send around. Um, okay, so uh, that seems good. Seems like we've got things lined up for next week. Uh, it's 729, so do we have a motion to adjourn? You do. Okay. Uh, Aaron uh, has moved to adjourn. Do we have a second? I'll second. And Aaron, I have a question for you after we're done. Oh, okay. okay. He's you already married. You want me to stay on the line? Yeah. It's okay. one, one second. All right.
Uh, okay, if those in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Have a good night.